Hey everyone, welcome to another video. My name's Steve, and if you're new to my channel, these videos are all about digging deeper into the cost of ownership. In today's video, I'm going to take a look at the performance upgrades I can make to my Porsche 992 that could make it as fast as a turbo. Previously, I did a video looking at the opportunities that might be available to me to change my 992 at some point in the future to a turbo version. But after doing that video, I wondered, what was actually available to do to the car as it is that would make it a bit faster without maybe having to spend too much money on it. Although I already feel the Porsche 992 Carrera 2 has enough performance as it is as a road car, I thought it would be interesting to take a look and see what you could do and maybe so other people could see what was possible from just having a quick look around the internet. Now before we start doing anything about the investigations that I did into what was available, we need to first take a look at the two cars and see what the spec is like, so what I've got now and what I would be jumping or at least trying to jump up to with performance upgrades that I could do that really was going to be very effortless on my part. We'll put both those cars up side by side on the screen you can see that there's a big jump in PS that I'm going to have to make up there because we're going from 385 to 580. Now the 0 to 62 time obviously drops from 4.2 to 2.8 and that comes with extra performance from the car. However, when you're looking at the extra performance figures, what comes with extra power also needs to come with some other points that may need also addressing if I was to upgrade the power on my C2. So if you delve into the standard specs on both the C2 and the turbo, you can see that basically the turbo has bigger brakes at the front and bigger discs front and back compared to my Carrera 2. That is in conjunction with there being extra power, more power, more force required to stop the car. So if I was to upgrade PS on my car, I'm probably gonna have to upgrade the brakes, which means I'm probably gonna have to get bigger wheels and tires to go with it. Now some points I probably need to point out here that do need to be considered before you do any upgrades to any car, uh, maybe three points and those are what does your finance agreement say? What does the insurance company say? And will any upgrades change something to your warranty? If you're in a finance agreement though, they do expect you to give the car back to them at the end of the term if that's what you're gonna do with fair wear and tear on it for the mileage and the age. It does not say in the text that I can find to do with that that I cannot modify the car. It just says I cannot take it on track days or race it or anything like that. When it comes to doing engine mapping, I'm not so sure and that might be something that you would have to check. I'm pretty sure the finance company would probably say don't do it, but if you can change it and put it back and it doesn't do any damage to the car, then maybe you'll be okay if that's under a finance agreement. In terms of insurance, they do say they do not cover modifications of any type that are made to the car. And I think that is only if you haven't actually advised them. In terms of that warranty, I have had a look around and forums have different opinions. People on forums have different opinions and a lot of them have said it will void a warranty doing certain things. Others have said that it won't. What I have done is I've found somewhere online that's given me an explanation to do with what's usually required from their warranty perspective. Basically, if we look at the first two lines in that first paragraph, you can see that it's a a myth apparently that modifications will void your manufacturer's warranty. What it might do though is it might partially or fully void anything that that modification has damaged that is not going to be covered by warranty when it comes to going back and getting it repaired. So if you're going to do an engine map and your engine blows up, the likelihood is Porsche will say you remapped the ECU, your engine blew up because of that, we aren't going to pay for it. So I've made all those points, you know, some of them will be applicable, some of them won't. If you don't care, it doesn't matter, but that is what I looked into. And now here is the things I found online that would basically maybe take my car up to the sort of PS that the turbo already has. Now, all I basically did was quickly do a Porsche 992 upgrades Google search and within seconds, it pulled up exactly what it was that I was looking for. Now, the company I found is called Litchfield and they are obviously somebody in the UK that I can use because that's where I'm based, but they use the dyno that's used by Porsche to develop their cars. So the what they've done is push the 992 Carrera from 385 up to 510 PS. If I'd had the S, they can take that 450 and jump it up to 580. Now I've looked at this and the cost on their website for doing this is 1,194 pounds. On top of that, they are basically somewhere in the country in the UK that I'm gonna have to take the car to. They don't come to you and I would have to take it there, stay, let them do the changes and then I would get my car back. So there's a cost for me on top of that to actually take the car down and get it done. 
Looking into the terms and conditions on their site, and we'll put that on the screen as well, and I'll just point this out to you. What they're saying there is that they cannot guarantee specific performance expectations. And then what they're also saying is that any upgrades can affect reliability and would require more frequent maintenance. And they do not take any responsibility for the upgrades after they've been installed, which on top of that means they give no warranty on the work that's being carried out. So it's up to you to accept that remapping it from them is you know, if it voids the Porsche warranty means that you're gonna be footing any costs for that damage that is caused. Next company I found offering the same type of service was called DMS Automotive, and here is the information for them on the screen. They're saying that they can get my C2 from 385 PS to 570 PS, which is more than it's been offered from Litchfield, which is 10 less than the PS on the turbo. Unfortunately, they don't have a price on their website, so I can't make a comparison to that. It does say in their information that they can come and perform this service by coming to you rather than you going to them. And there also is agents around that can perform this service for you that might be closer than taking it to their headquarters. After that, I found a third option. And this third option doesn't give you the same performance uplift as the other two, but it is actually a self-done update that you can perform by adding a chip. You do the installation of this yourself and you just order this online. Now it costs £499 at the moment. You can pay £50 extra to get app control with it as well and it'll take the PS on a C2 from 385 to 465. They've got horsepower on the screen there but if it's 385 I think they mean PS. Now I've seen a little video on there to do with the VW where you take the rocker cover off. I'm not sure how you perform it in a Porsche. I probably have to have a look into that because you're going to have to be able to get at the back end of the car. So you probably have to go underneath it to get at the cables to plug it in. However, with the race chip, you can see on the screen now that they do actually offer a slight warranty with this and it comes with two year warranty on the two highest place models and it will cover warranty on vehicles up to 100,000 kilometers, 60,000 miles but they will only be liable for damage up to £8,000 and no excess. That's an interesting one, that's something you could do at home. You're not gonna get the same performance figures to get you up to the turbo, but it is something that you can add onto the car that you could always take off. And it says there that you can actually return it back to the original engine mapping that came back from the manufacturer. So there's three options for upgrading your mapping on the engine to get more power out that way. But again, if you're gonna do something like that, if I'm going to go faster and I've got more horsepower and I'm going to change the engine mapping, I'm probably going to need more stopping power. Now, I've had a good look around and I know that the brakes on the Porsches are supplied by Brembo. Now, I've had a look and I can't really find anything that says it's specifically for the Porsche 992. And I've searched all sorts of Brembo stuff. And although I can find that they're Brembo's and I know what they need to be from the specifications on the car, I can't seem to find the parts to buy them from any of the genuine support suppliers online. So what I'm gonna do is I've just had a quick look and ceramic brake option from Porsche, which isn't part of their listed upgrades on their website, comes in at 6,321 pounds. So I'm gonna work on the basis that say I wanted to go back to Porsche and get the brakes done, Okay, it's probably not gonna be 6,231 pounds, but if I budgeted that, that is how much it would cost to get ceramics on, plus probably fitment. So if I'm gonna just get the front brakes changed to a higher caliber and brake disc, it's probably not gonna be as much as that. After that, there was another easy one. To get the Porsche Genuine wheels, I just need to jump up from the Carrera to the Carrera S wheels, and that will get me 21s on the back and 20s on the front. I've had a look on Porsche's website there and they do a package which is wheels and tires and that comes out at £3,994. So there's the two extras I would probably need to add to the car if I was going to jump the power up as high as the turbo. So let's see if I took the costs to do it most expensive that I've found and see what the actual total comes to. Now, if we start with the engine mapping from Litchfield, that comes in £1,194. The brakes, I'm just gonna take a gamble at a price of 6,321, as if I was gonna put ceramics on from Porsche. The wheels and tires, we already know are 3,994, and that takes us to a total of £11,509. On top of that, if I was to change the insurance because I'm going to have to tell them and they're going to say it's a higher performance car now, we're going to need to up your insurance. I'm basically just going to work on the principle of what it would cost me to insure a turbo. And that was around the 2000 mark when I last looked. So 
I'm just going to add a thousand pound extra because I'm at about 800 pound now on my insurance that would take me up to 12,509 pounds. That is the expensive way of doing it. That is the way that's going to get me probably closest to the turbo upgrades that I would need to get the performance without changing anything else about the car. However, if I was just wanting to look for a little bit of performance and I didn't want to change the brakes and the tires and I just wanted a little bit more oomph out the car, that race chip option does look appealing. It's also self-installed and you can take it off and put it back to stock. Taking it back to stock would mean that if I came to sell the car or trade it in, it would be exactly the way that it was and I would have changed nothing else about the car. So there we go. That was a quick insight into what I could maybe do to the car to make it as fast as a turbo. If you've enjoyed that video and you like the information, stay tuned and subscribe for more videos and I will see you again in the next one. Thank you very much. Bye.